air. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this spider web top. It's honestly my best selling item and also I get daily requests of people asking me how I make it. So here it is. <laughs> um, also, just like as a disclaimer, the first time I made the top, I completely freehanded the pattern and stuff. So over time, I've just been trying to like, you know, make it more structured, make it more symmetrical, all that stuff. And this is the conclusion that I've come up with, so I hope it's easy to understand. In terms of yarns and stuff like that, the white is obviously a classic. I use um, the Elise Golden Cotton one, and this is a 2 to 4 hook size. Um, personally, I would go for a 3 hook size in any sort of yarn that you use because as you can see, the chains are pretty thin, um, but if you want to use thicker chains, obviously, if that's the look you're going for, it's completely personalized. You can personalize a whole bunch of things with this top. Um, in the tutorial, I made a red one, so in case people want some, you know, ideas on different ways that you can interpret this design, um, I made a red one, and honestly, I love it so much. Um, and I know that I'm going to be wearing the red color a lot. I also really like the thought of it in maroon. Um, this is the same exact type as the white. Um, and yeah, I would really recommend this size of yarn because it's thin, it makes it look nice. It's nice and like flowy and flimsy, which is kind of the look that I think looks best with this. But you could also make it in black. Um, black would look so so cool as well and I think that would be my next color if I were to make this again for myself. In terms of measurements, um, you don't need many because this top is very like flimsy and flowy so it's not very tight. Um, but in terms of some specific measurements, you would want to know how long you want your sleeves to be. I personally like this length so it's not full length. Um, and also your waist measurement because you just want to make sure that when you are tying everything together you leave enough space for the top to fall nicely on your waist or however long the top is on you and also your shoulder measurement so that you can tie these panels together properly and it's not too tight not too loose and just to your liking okay to start you'll just magic circle so I can make a slower tutorial for that where you can search up how to do it, but yeah, and then double chain two, and then you're gonna go into the circle, double crochet, and chain one. You're gonna do that again, double crochet, and chain one, and you're gonna keep doing that. 12 times so you will have 12 sets of double crochet and chain ones when you are done. Now you're going to be done with your circle so you have 12 double crochets all around and you're just going to chain one more and you're going to go into that first initial chain and just slip stitch. I'm just going to bring the hanging yarn over as well and you're just going to slip stitch. And then you're going to chain two because so that counts as one double crochet and you're going to find where see that's your chain one and that's your next double crochet so you're going to chain three one two three because you're just going to increase by two every single row so we chained one now we're going to chain three and you're going to double crochet into the top of that other double crochet and you have a little loop. So you're gonna one, two, three, chain, and you're gonna find your next double crochet, and you're gonna double crochet into the top of that. There you go. And you're gonna keep doing this all the way around until you reach the end right over here. So this is what your circle is going to start looking like now. So you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 little spaces and you're just going to 1, 2, 3 and as you can see there's only one chain left in the middle so you're going to go into that third chain that you made and you're going to slip stitch, oops sorry, and you're just going to slip stitch. 
there you go. And you're gonna continue to do that. So one, two, and we did one chain, three chain, so three, four, five. So next row is gonna be five chains. So one, two, three, four, five. And then you're gonna go into the top of your double crochet and you're gonna double crochet again, just like you did before. There you go. One, two, three, four, five. And you're gonna go back into the top and double crochet. And you're gonna continue to do that all the way around. Done with the third row, and this is what it's starting to look like. And if I show you one of my past ones, as you can see, it's gonna start forming like a little web. And if you count the different rows that I did, so I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I did 15 rows of basically increasing by two every single time. So that's basically what you're gonna do. Chain two, then increase by two at every single row of your chains until you have the desired measurement that you want. I'm on my sixth row now and it might become a little difficult to keep track of your uh, stitches. So that's where your stitch counter comes in and you can see I'm on my 11th chain row. So you can just keep track like that. Another really helpful thing is that as your circle keeps getting bigger, you might start getting confused with like where the beginning of it is. So I would recommend taking one of your stitch markers and just going into the third loop on the chain and just putting that in there so you don't get lost. So here is my finished first panel. I ended up doing 16 rows of the stitches, which ended up being around 33 stitches, uh, 33 chains across. You can do your measurements and do as you please. Um, I would say for small slash medium sizing, um, I would do this kind of measurement, but you know, to each their own. So I'm just gonna make another panel like this and then I will show you how to put it all together. Another tip that I have is to weave in your ends as you go because once you start getting on with this project, it gets really confusing with all the different chains and the ends and you end up missing things. So um, I would say weave in your ends as you go. Here I had to uh, tie in a new ball of yarn because my other one ran out so i'm just gonna tie in that end and then i'm gonna tie in this loose end where i tied off um and yeah the way that i find the placement of the sleeves to go best is basically lining up one of the rows with the middle of my chest and then after one column i put in a stitch marker and then I do the same thing on the other side. So basically there would be two columns and then the sleeves. It would look something like this. And then this would be where your neck would go when you put it on. And you can try it on, like put it on, see how much you like it. If you want the sleeves to droop a little bit more over your shoulders, you can go halfway down another column or all the way there. This is just the way that I like it to fit me. So that's how I do it. Sectioning off the rest of the top, this is the circumference of your neck, so this is where your neck would go. And then for the sleeves, based on your own measurements, you can do whatever fits you best. This is what I personally do. I do one column and then half of another column. So this is the circumference of my arm. I like my sleeves to be very loose, but if you want your sleeves to be fitter, then you just measure your arm and then just do exactly that much space in here. Now onto the side of the top, I stitch half of the rest of this column, one entire other column and half of another column. So all together it'd be two. So half, one, half. This is the side of my uh, top. And I do the same thing on the other side. So neck, arm, side. 
And then the bottom of the top, you need to make sure that whatever measurement you have at this bottom row fits over your hips. So just make sure this sits nicely over your hips or else the top may sit awkwardly on you. So just do your own figuring out of this. And this is honestly the most complicated part, but once you have it down, it's not that difficult. You can choose the order that you wanna go in next. You can either stitch the sides together and then do the sleeves, or you can do the opposite. I personally find it easier to stitch the sides together before I go on to the sleeves. It makes things a little less confusing. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to stitch together the side, like I just did over here. So basically, you're going to go into your stitch marker, pull it out, thread through your uh, needle, and just pull it through. I usually leave a little bit on the ends, uh, just to, you know, tie that off. You line up your uh, chains next to each other and I just go in through the next chain and into the next and I just pull it through. My thread is being a little tricky but yeah. And then I do the same thing again. So in kind of a zigzag <laughs> formation and then I do the same thing over here. Thread that through, and that's basically what I do all the way up to the stitch marker where our sleeve starts. The last and final part of the tutorial is the sleeves, so they're gonna look something like this. I'll show you how to customize the look and feel of them. So to start off, you're going to go where the neck hole is, where you sectioned off and put your two stitch markers, so this is where your neck would be. And this is not attached together, remember? So you're just gonna pull that off. And you're gonna thread your hook through those two stitches. I'm just gonna try to find it. There you go. And then you're gonna take your loose yarn, make a little slip knot, and put your hook through. Pull it tight and pull it through both those hoops so and you're just gonna single crochet I like to go in once more just to solidify that bind right at the neck because there is sometimes some tension there when you put the top on and I just want to make sure that it stays hooked closed so I'm just gonna go in once more into those stitches pull all the way through and then crochet Boom. So that's gonna create a really tight bind right there. So it's not gonna come apart when you put the top on. And then, depending on how long your last chains are, you're gonna do basically half of those. So mine were 33. There's not really a half for that. So I'm just gonna round it up to 16. So I'm gonna do 16 chains right now. After you've done your 16 chains, you're just gonna count 16 on the bottom chain that is the last line of your spider web. And you're gonna double crochet into that chain. So I'm just gonna double crochet into this. And then you're gonna do 16 more chains and you're gonna double crochet right over the double crochet of the spider web. So you're gonna crochet 16 chains again and you're then gonna double crochet into the join of the side of your spider web. So you've done basically half of it. And then you're gonna basically do the same thing on the other half. So I've just turned the spider web to the other side. So 16 chain, double crochet, 16 chain, double crochet halfway down this chain, 16 chain, double crochet into that join that we just made over here. 
So after you're done, it's going to be a little bit confusing to look at at first, but that's basically what I've done. So I have six little hoops all around that are going to make up my sleeve. And as you can see on the other side, I've made a couple of rounds, so that's what it's going to start looking like. And in order to customize this however you want, you can, first of all, obviously, you're just going to divide the last row of yours in half. So if you're really smaller or larger, your little hoops are gonna be smaller or larger than mine. So you can customize that. You can make chains of 10, you can make chains of five, or you can make chains of 20 or 25, depending on basically how much you want your sleeve to be, basically how many rows do you want in your sleeve. And another thing that you can customize with the sleeves is the length. So I personally, like my length to be halfway down my arm simpler to see on white but as you can see I absolutely love this sleeve I also really like this yarn it's very flowy and soft but um, as you can see this is not halfway but it goes a little bit over my elbow and I really like the look of that especially on the white uh, spiderweb top so you can customize yours however you want uh, that's just personally what I like you can make it full length you can make it absolutely no sleeves if you want and just attach the two panels together at the top and just have it like that I think that will look pretty cool as well so you have a lot of free way with that and as you can see over here I've made more so my chains are smaller so I have more more of the little holes all around and that's what this looks like so you have a little bit of a frame of reference between the two and then you can decide whatever one you want to do one last thing that I really recommend doing while you're making your sleeve is just to stretch it out because since these are chains they are gonna stretch so I would just like to every couple of rounds just stretch it out this way and stretch it out this way just to get a little bit of a feel of it and then you can just keep going and also don't make sure to leave any loose ends um, I do that a lot with these tops because there's so many loose ends but just make sure you tie all of those unless you like the look and then so you don't have to tie those thank you so much for watching if you have any questions anything that's unclear any suggestions leave them in the comments leave them in my dms i have all of my social media linked and you can keep a lookout for more crochet themed videos because i will be making some more so yeah thank you